welcome to another discussion organized by the Malta Airport Foundation. Today I have the pleasure to welcome here with me Mr. Mario Farugia, who is the chairman of Fondazioni Wirt Artna. Hello, thank you for being here with us today. And let's start a bit about the role of Fondazioni Wirt Artna and how the events of the past years have impacted your work. So Fondazioni Wirt Artna was formed in 1987. Mm -hmm. It's a um, it's a non-governmental organization, which is uh, very active in the fields of cultural heritage, uh, preservation, and management. Um, we have uh, we operate on a national scale, and um, we are responsible for a number of um, cultural heritage sites, which are publicly owned, but are but are entrusted to the foundation. And some of these had been turned also into museums mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, heritage, heritage attractions, one of which is, of course, the Las Claris War Rooms. Um, as an organization, uh, obviously, like, like all the other organizations, uh, we are negatively impacted by, by the pandemic. Um, uh, for a considerable number of months, we had to close off our properties Indeed. Um, uh, and we had to simply reduce um, uh, our services to, to just you know maintaining the sites because there was almost no one around so obviously we had no visitors and uh, you know it made no sense to, to carry on opening the sites when there was no one coming in. Indeed this has left um, uh, a gaping hole on our finances and um, as a result, we had to scale down all our operations, including we had to cut back on a number of restoration projects, okay. and um, you know some of which now have gone back by about three years. Today we're going to talk a particular about a particular project. It started in 2017, before the pandemic, uh, when you teamed up with the Malta Airport Foundation on an interesting restoration project, which saw the complete restoration of the combined operations room, including a 20 meter wide map used by NATO. Um, could you explain what is the combined operations room and why it is such an important part of Malta's wartime heritage? Yes, the combined operations room is located under the upper Baraka Gardens, very deep underground in uh, ancient tunnels that were excavated originally by the, by the Knights of St. John. And um, in 1940, they were appropriated by the British military and had them widened and enlarged in order to install in them a war headquarters. This was a time when uh, obviously Malta was propelled right at the forefront of the, of the war. And um, the British military needed to have a bomb-proof um, installation or, or um, um, complex uh, from which they, they could direct the war. And uh, in fact, in, in, um, in this particular place, they had installed a number of operation rooms, one of which is the combined operations room. It's called the combined operations room because it was used by the three fighting services, mm -hmm. not just one, and uh, they would combine their efforts on a given operation. Now, really and truly, the space of this room is um, of particular interest because in 1940, it started off as a naval combined operations room. And then, in, um, you know, some, some months later, it was split in two rooms, mm -hmm. one of which uh, was the Royal Air Force um, Fighter Sector Operations Room, which is essentially um, the, the very spot from where the air defense of the island was directed. And um, it went on like that till, uh, till May 1943, when the room reverted back at being a combined operations room. And then, after the war, it was modernized, and in the 1960s, it was also used by NATO. Well, from the 1950s, really, 1953 till, till, uh, till 1977, it was, it was used um, uh, by, uh, by NATO. After 1970, unofficially, but they went on using it just, just the same under the guise of, of the British forces. What we had done was, um, this room was in a very, very terrible state. It was abandoned, it had, had not been touched 
um, since the 1970s. Um, there, there was a lot of um, problems caused by water ingress, for example, okay. from, from the above garden. And, um, uh, you know, th there was a lot to, to be done. And uh, through the assistance of the MIA Foundation, we had, we had managed to, uh, um, uh, to restore this room mm -hmm. back to how it, it used to be in 1969, which is the very year when it was completed in its present format. Okay. It must um, have been a huge challenge absolutely, to restore something Absolutely, like yes. That. In the process, we, um, we also restored a very, very large wall map, mm -hmm. which, is, which is located in the same room. And one has to say that in the process of restoring this map, we actually found another two maps which were buried underneath this map. The, ma the map that we're talking about is from the 1960s mm -hmm. and obviously it shows the uh, geopolitical um, situation at the time, you know, the, the Soviet bloc and uh, the, um, some, some, some French colonies are also marked, for example, okay. on, on, on this map. Is it in paper format? No, no, no. This is, um, uh, this is made from wood okay. and it's painted by hand. Mm. Um, the ones that we had found underneath are also um, uh, made from wood and painted by hand because wall maps in those days were made like that. Uh, but they are older than this one. And in fact, there is one in particular that dates back to the Second World War. Wow. And we had also restored um, all three. All three wall maps now are restored and uh, positioned, uh, you know, for, for on, on display. I mean, visitors can, can come and, and see them. Okay, so, so the public can now enjoy Absolutely. Uh, this project. And have any sites reopened yet to the public? Um, uh, yes, but, um, um, you know, sites, we, we have reopened our major sites, but business is still very, very low. Okay. And in fact, um, we're not opening on our regular um, time schedule. We have some of the sites which are opening on a reduced, for example, um, day schedule. Um, but obviously, you know, we're hoping for the best and, um, you know, hopefully later on this year, we'll get back on our feet. Um, some of the sites managed by Fondazione Wirtartna have actually, including the Lascaris War Room, have actually been awarded the Traveler's Choice Certificate by TripAdvisor yes. last year. What does this mean to you and what does it mean to the general public? Yes. As well, well um, to the general public, obviously, uh, it, it means um, an assurance, uh, a quality assurance, if you want. For us, it is uh, it gives us um, a lot of satisfaction because you know all the effort that goes into these sites throughout the year is not only certified; uh, it, it is appreciated. Um, TripAdvisor obviously is followed by millions of people, so it's very influential. And getting um, uh, the rating is very important also for marketing purposes. And I have to say that our sites have been voted amongst the the best five um, military cultural attractions on the island for the past eight or nine years. Um, that is, you know, year after year. So obviously, um, you know, that shows that what we're doing is um, essentially um, uh, in the right direction and um, our efforts are being appreciated. Absolutely. Any other interesting projects coming up? Well, at the moment we are working on uh, the Time Gun Museum, which is, um, um, this is a small museum um, located on the, the, um, the stock exchange. Um, um, and um, this will be tied up with the, with the saluting battery. Really and truly it will be telling the history of the saluting battery. Um, um, it will also tell the story of gunpowder and its relation with time, timekeeping, because obviously at the saluting battery we fire a gun at noon and another one um, uh, in, the, uh, in the afternoon uh, in the same way that was done, you know, centuries ago when public time was announced by gunfire. So obviously we'll be telling that story. Indeed, it's a very interesting event uh, for one to watch. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you for the hard work you do to preserve our heritage as well. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.